Hello everybody, it's your girl Connie Kenneth and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. Don't watch any further. Just subscribe first because most of you are watching my videos but you're not subscribed. So if you love the content, if you love what you're seeing, make sure you subscribe and I will be so thankful um, for it. And so uh, today's video is Miss Trudy's, you know, um, trip back to her roots. Okay, so she said that she traveled 416 kilometers to, su to surprise uh, her grandfather in the village, so the Luo Nation. So, you know, she's from Kisumu, so that's Kisumu City. And so if you haven't watched my other reaction video to when Miss Trudy went to visit her grandmother, you know, in, um, in Kirinyaga, make sure you go back and watch that one as well. So, this video, I'm telling you, I think it's going to be a very interesting video. Look at the feet right now. The traditional gear right now is looking so good. So, let's see what she has for us today. The African culture. I just can't get enough of it. Hey, right. it's all things. Mm. What brand? It'll come on. Oh. Lally, brother, what is it? culture i just can't get enough of it mm. and i know you also can't get enough of it because you've been asking me for more trudy we want more trudy stay in the village longer trudy so you guys already know that your wish is my command right so today i'm doing a video and showing you a day mm. in the life of a Luo village girl <laughs> so you guys already know i'm kenyan cocktail i'm half kikuyu I'm two third Luo and I'm a third Luya. So when I was doing my Kikuyu video, um, you guys said you wished I had traditional clothes. And uh, see, today I made sure I found some. Yes, and you're looking hot, 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 hot. Looking so good. Luo traditional clothes. I really hope you guys think I look good. So what I have on, this is cow skin, as you guys can see. And um, this as well is from Animal. And the skirt is Animal print. And this look is just for, I don't know what you think, you guys. <laughs> this is just fire. I'm so excited about my outfits. I'm going to leave a comment below. If you want to get yourself an outfit like this, I'm going to link you up with the person who is best for this video. <laughs> anyway, you guys, today we are in Luo land. This is the Luo nation. And I'm showing you a typical mm -hmm. day in the life of a Luo girl in the village. I hope you like this video. If you do, drop a comment, let me know, and don't forget to subscribe. So now that yeah. we... It's not easy. Uh, in a Luo... It's not easy. Um, Let me see if I can get the... Of a Luo girl in the village. I hope you... You know, it's not easy blowing the maize. You know, the maize or whatever, the rice. It's not so easy to just throw it up and you know let it land it back into the into the what do you call it the thing um you know without making some fall down or a lot well you can just have like one or two which is fall over but uh, it's not easy to just do it without having any fall over so yeah it's i used to love that and also when you're slicing the kills with a with a very sharp knife that was also not it's not easy to do but once you get the hand of it then it's very easy video if you do drop a comment let me know and don't forget to subscribe <laughs> so now that we are in why is she so pretty she's so pretty in a Luo homestead which is also known as a bomber i'm giving you guys a home tour basically of a house in the rural area but i'm not doing it by myself i have a relative with me hey david yes, I'm <laughs> this is a relative of mine so sasa kevin hi he's kind of a cousin a distant cousin yeah and this is his home so thank you so much for having us. Can you give us a tour of the, you know, neighborhood, of your home? Oh God, <laughs> the neighborhood of your home. Give us a tour of your home. <laughs> this looks like the main house here. In fact, guys, do you know that long ago, Luo men were allowed to marry more than two wives? Thank you. Luo men were allowed to marry more than two, two wives or one wife? Two wives. Hey, surely. <laughs> and not just the Luo. I know, for example, uh, for my family, so in Kirinyaga, my granddad used to have four wives okay and so in the homestead um there are four houses for each wife and of course each wife 
had um, had children. And so I remember asking my, so my grandma was a fast wife. And I remember asking her, like, were you not jealous? I mean, how did you guys like live together? Because you know how we as women, we tend to be jealous. We tend to think that, you know, my husband is spending more time with, with him than with her. I mean, with her instead of the second wife or the third wife. So it, it was, um, I remember, and my grandma said, no, because back in the days, you know, women used to stay at home. And because they used to earn, they used to live in vast, you know, vast um, air, fields and areas of land. So where they used to cultivate, they were agriculture, um, they were farmers. And so, um, and so, so agriculture was like the big thing in a family. And so the husband needed like uh, many women who would work in the farm and help in the farm. And then, of course, the children, the more children you have the more you can you can have help from you know from your children as well and you know it's like a heritage so there was like no jealousy no stuff like that but of course i think there must have been just a little bit especially when you know so my grandma used to tell me that you know every woman had to cook a dinner and then my granddad had to choose oh tonight i want to spend I want to have dinner with my first wife or my fourth wife. And so he, it was his, he was like the king, you know, the king. So today, no, it's impossible to have polygamous families. I think they still exist in some areas, but yeah, I, personally, it's not my vibe. Okay, no, I, I will just remove your eyes. <laughs> Surely, I mean, if me, me, I swear to you, even if I was there back then, I have to be the only wife. No, right. Surely. Leave a comment below. Let me know. Anyway, Period. long ago, Luo men were allowed to marry more than one wife, but he, he insists that it's more than two wives. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> in this household, we have two wives. And that's why you can see this house is right in front of us. There's a house of the first wife and the house of the second wife. Mm -hmm. So come with us. Let's go. Kuja. Oh, guys, do you know that according to the Luo tradition, Luos are not being circumcised? Oh. I think it's the only tribe in Kenya that are doing that. I'm not sure. Okay, but those yeah. are not we're not being circumcised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think the the Kikuyus for a fact always, always, always had been um uh, have been circumcised. And back in the days for the circumcision for the Kikuyu, it was when you're eighteen. The pain. The pain, my guy. But I feel that it was a way of going from being um a boy to being upgraded to being an adult. So it was like the rite of passage, you know, to being an adult. Just like as for the Messiah, it was going out there in the bush and killing a lion and coming back with a skull. And But I know for the Luos, it was, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think someone had told me it was something to do with the teeth. Did they like remove one tooth or something? I don't know. Let's see. The initiation process was by removing the teeth, the oh, okay. front teeth, the first six teeth. What? Initiation process was by removing the teeth, the front teeth, the first six teeth. Oh my goodness, the first six. And what? That's painful. That must have been painful. And I can imagine they were just like not going to the dentist or anything. You must have removed them with what? With a, a, ha a hammer and knocked them down or with the pliers? Ew, no. Up or down? My grandmother has also shown us that her teeth were also removed, okay. which is crazy. Wow. So like they're not even loose, they just remove them. Jeez, that must have been painful. Yeah. Oh my gosh, guys, apparently they were being initiated by removing the teeth and they used a method. Method. Ooh. They used something that looks like a pliers. So they said uh, they remove uh, six teeth. Once they remove them, they're thrown away. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So after that, the teeth don't grow. Now yeah, you got to no. stay like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because only the milk teeth grow. So once you lose your milk teeth, they grow back, but not the, the, the permanent ones never grow back. So you just, you, yeah, you either go for a transplant, which is hell expensive, or you just stay like that. But because it was a tradition, I guess everybody just stayed without the teeth. Because it's not the middle teeth, you 
guys. We're talking about the matured teeth, mm. permanent teeth. So that yeah. is insane. That that must have been so painful. Right. But even her, she's like that, as you can see, which is just crazy. So you see that many um old Luo men used to look like that, right? Without six teeth. Like, yeah, but what? Okay, maybe hers fell off because I I remember my grandmother's teeth fell off too with age. So okay, so for her it was just like a natural way of removing it, or the front ones, not the ones behind. So that is an interesting Luo tradition. Although now things have really changed because now Luo's are being circumcised, right? Mm. Yes, that is just something that used to happen. So this is my grandmother, and uh, she is the first wife and the owner of this house behind us. And as you can see, this is a typical house of the uh, Luo. Yeah, how do you say uh, how do you say grandma in Luo? Let me know in the comments below. If you're Luo, let me know how you say grandma. For people, this is actually a house that is made from mud. Yes, guys, mm -hmm. I said it. It's mud, the mud that we step on. And then on top here, it's dung has been used to, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah the cow dung, maybe to. To cover the cracks, I don't know. Beautify the house, so you wouldn't even be able to tell it's a mud house, but it looks so beautiful. Also, if you look at the roof, the roof is made of iron sheets, but this is an improvement because long ago the roofs were patched with grass. Right. But then you know, with time when it rains, it drips and stuff like that. So in fact, right now, if your house is not made of iron sheets, the roof, people can even come together, contribute, so that they can, you know, improve your house because mm -hmm. the first house comes with, you know, its disadvantages. Right. Let's go and visit the second wife. This is the house of the second wife. It's just a few steps from the house of the first wife. I still don't understand how they are able to coexist. <laughs> how? I thought you mean are jealous. Yani, am I the only woman who's jealous? No. Like, I don't know. But this, they're so. No, but I guess it's it's um it's a generational thing. I think if you were, if we were born um back in the days where traditionally you had to get married. Uh, to you have to have a co-wife then we would just accept it you know because women back then were not educated it was a, their way of life but now more and more women started going to school so that's why it has really changed and you know knowledge is power so because knowledge is power then you know women don't no longer accept that but today you have women who like to you know to be in a in a three relationship cup well thruple i would say so today's a choice. Back in the days, it wasn't a choice. So, yeah. So they're so loving towards each other. I think this is how it should be, you know. Right. So let's go and say hello. Hi, hello. Guys, so we are from the house of the second wife. And right on my left, this is her kitchen. Mm -hmm. Because long ago, the kitchen was actually separate from the main house. So down there, you can see there's another house. Um, when young Luo men grow and come of age, they are actually expected to move out of the parents' house and construct their own. What's the muddy house? Is it like a storage house? So the son of this house has a house there, and as you can see, yeah, that is it like a storage uh, for maize or or the harvest? Guys, apparently this are bricks being made here, and these oh. bricks are being made from mud. Okay. It's a special way of making it, but guys, oh my gosh, they're actually real bricks. This is insane. And guys, on my right, as you can see, um, we have the houses of the sons of the first wife. This is of the first son and of the second son. And mm -hmm. they are one big happy family. <laughs> right. Guys, now that you have learned something yeah, about... Yeah, so if the sons, you know, grew up and they had um you know the, they got married in turn then they would you know extend the home state so you would find uh, many families living in the same place but just different houses around the luo traditional culture um, i want to go and pay a visit to some elderly relatives mm -hmm. these are people who are about a hundred years you know so i think visiting them we learn so much and it's a blessing so you gotta stay tuned in and after that after that we're going to be making some traditional luo food so you've got to right. stay tuned in because it's gonna be oh that's omena that's omena that's a very small fish um that is very tasty if it's cooked correctly because otherwise it can have a very strong uh very strong taste so you need to make it um very well Oh my gosh. A few moments later. So according to the Luo culture. Moments later. So according Look at that picture. I I love artistic 
um, pictures and Ben is doing a great job. He knows how to capture those moments and honestly they're boom. Love it. This is the new culture. I love it. When you go to visit people, you don't go empty handed. Mm -hmm. You have to do some shopping, you know, right. go with something in your hands. Mm -hmm. So that's why today I've come to the biggest mall here in Yala to, you know, do some shopping. Hey, yeah, well, let's go. A few minutes later. Guys, you're finally in Yala Market, as you guys can see. Uh, today, people are not so many because it's not market day. So mm -hmm. here, they usually have specific days, which are market days, which is Tuesday and Friday. If you come here on those days, it is packed mm -hmm. to the brim. However, I'm so glad to be here because so many people are looking at me. You know, thank God it's not a market day because right. I don't know how I would have survived. Anyway, mm -hmm. let's go in and look for some traditional local food. Roboroni. Oh, that's Omena. Okay, okay. Wow. All right. Mm. The fried ones are boom. But I don't know if you have a good recipe for the Omena. Let me know in the comment section below if you have a very nice recipe for the Omena. Oh. How do you cook it? Yeah, what do you put? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. okay and you know what guys i do that a lot when i go to the market and i want to try like a different recipe i always ask um i always ask the sellers how they how the best way to make it because they know the best way of cooking something or whatever they're selling and so that's a okay Okay, so I will try it myself. I will try that recipe. And if you have any other different recipe, let me know in the comment section below. Guys, so I just got myself omena. Mm. Are you familiar with omena? I don't know what you call this small fish in your country, mm. but in Kenya we call them omena. I think it's a luo name. Eh? And then, of course, I'm looking for something to fry it with and uh, onion. Right. I think this will be a good one. Is there anyone who fries food without onion, honestly? It, that would be very interesting. If you fry food without onion in your country, mm. leave a comment. Let me know. Mm. Guys, so we finally got in everything we need in the market to make our traditional Luo food. I really can't wait to get back to the house and do this thing, man. I'm already salivating. If you love Omena, drop a comment. And uh, let me know, what's your favorite type of fish? Is it tilapia? Is it omena? Is it mbuta? Drop a comment. Guys, so I've come to visit one old man in the village. And I haven't come just empty-handed. I've come with something. You guys, do you see how the, the, the homestays are clean and green? They are, they look so good. Look at that house. Look at that. <gasps> wow. And I haven't come just empty handed. Yeah, look at that. I don't know, is it made, what is it made of, you know? Wow, I love it. Mm. Guys, so I don't have a grandfather. My grandfather, who's my dad's dad, passed away. But he has brothers mm -hmm. who are still alive, and he's one of them. As you can see, he's extremely old. He can't exactly remember who I am. So anyway, I'm just gonna. Guys, old age. He can't remember me, but mm. I'm still grateful because he's still here. You know, oh. thank God for him. So we look like here. Right. Okay. Oh. Let's cherish our, you know, our elders. Let's love them. Um, I mean, if you still have them, it's a blessing and you should, I'm telling you, I took care of my grandmother until her last, last, you know, breath. Um, you know, I, she used to come visit me before she passed away. 
we spent two months together in my house and um and yeah honestly if you still have your grandparents or even your you know your 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 uncles and you know your elderly uncles and aunts look after them take care of them because if you do it you're showing your children how to treat the elderly and in turn they will take care of you if you don't then for the children it's okay you're not old and you don't they don't really care about you anymore but if you set you know the example you show the example then of course and it's just it's just a beautiful way you know to have to receive their blessings you know and um and i believe I str i'm a strong believer of how blessings are important from the elderly so miss trudy thank you so much for showing the younger generation that it's important um you know to to you know to just check on our grandparents enjoy so these are all people and i'm so humbled to be you know with them like when i'm with them i feel so i feel blessed like he's literally 95 years old only five years to 100 so this man has lived life mm -hmm. guys so now i've come to another relative and um here it's so hard to use a car because the path is very narrow mm -hmm. and uh, also you know the, ha the households cover a really large you know land Okay. So it's hard to just walk. It's going to take so much time. That's why we prefer to use, you know, motorbikes. And in Africa, I've got time. <laughs> look at the guy on the bike. He's peeping. Close your eyes. Don't look at my sister, okay? <laughs> look at the way he's just peeping, you know, like slowly. <laughs> so Santi. Ah, Santi. I, I wanted to show you guys that um, the reason why we... Oh, guys, look, I'm really impressed by how beautiful the houses are kept, the the, the, the homestay, it's just so nice, beautiful. We, not, we haven't bought a maize flower, is because Luos are known to grow a lot of maize, mm -hmm. and they take the maize, right? Yeah. And then they dry it. As you can see, yeah, even yeah. in the farm, there's a lot of maize. They dry it and take it to the portion mill. So we thought mm -hmm. there's no need of carving maize, although they eat it a lot. Right. So that's why we prefer to carve. Sugar is like a must. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So let's go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can't forget. He can't forget right. me. That's so sweet. <laughs> yeah. You have not come this way. No. no. Okay. <laughs> right why <laughs> yeah he just says it so why i mean why did i hug you of course i remember you uh -huh. Does he resemble? <laughs> you know, you guys. I would. I'm not surprised because Ben looks like they look like brother and sister, uh, Ben and Miss Trudy. And so many people have said it before. So I wouldn't be surprised if he says that he looks like somebody in the family. You know. You don't know. His brother. Guys. My grandfather, right? Yes. So, guys, he's my grandfather's brother. And I'm so happy to meet so him. So, he resembles. Apparently, Ben resembles my <laughs> So, in short, can you tell us? At your age, almost a hundred years, what is the biggest lesson you've learned in life? Wow, tolerance and self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your advice. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I really, you want to know what I look like. When you're young, did you ever imagine being a hundred
when you no, have No, I mean, what, 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 I, what I mean, you know, I think when, when I started, my aim was, what about that man there? Mm -hmm. Why can't he be there? So there, there were old men there, like uh, my grand, your grand, grand, Okay, so literally he's just saying like, okay, so he would look at other old people and they were always seated down, you know, always seated the whole day, but he doesn't do that. So I guess he walks around a lot, he keeps himself busy, and you know, it's his secret, you know, for aging so well, and his English is so good, so he's a learned man, and wow, it's fantastic. Oh. Oh. Right. If you if you stop that, walk. If you just walk at random, don't don't worry about where you are going. Just walk. Oh. Just <laughs> yeah, I, I need to see you as if you are you know, as a man or something like right. that. Right. We are not. What advice can you tell us? No. It doesn't look so comfortable. There is nothing, you know, in the um, in the can. So you need to fill it up so it can, you know, like apply apply pressure on your head so it's easier to hold. help you know i don't know it looks wet a little bit but no i don't know maybe it's just a red soil but with the sleepers it doesn't help but i still love i have a village and i love it right. oh It was like, oh my god, what is she doing? What is she doing? Like, what are you doing? <gasps> I love look at <laughs> yeah, it's not a good strategy, Miss Trudy. It's not, it's not, it's not, you know, let's say things as they are. It's not. Uh, so personally, I've done this before, you know, when I when I was a child, I we used to go visit. Um, so my cousins in Kirinyaga and we used to take them tungis. How do you call that in English? I have no idea. I remember mtungi, so it's mtungi, okay. 
And so you just take like, um, you take a jug, you fill it in, then you pour in. You fill the jug and you pour in. Because if you take them tungi itself, then it's heavy to bring it out, you know. So they should probably try and look for a different, like a pipe or something, because it must be very tiring to just get water this way. <laughs> oh, the kid, he kills me. You got it. Hey, this whole thing. Not even lifting it from here is a problem. Right. Hey, <laughs> village girls, respect. I can't. Oh, David, come and help me. Your village girls, respect. From today, you know what you said initially? You, you can't respect someone's hustle until you put yourself in their shoes. Mm -hmm. Right. Guys, men, this is this is crazy. This is so this place is so steep. My cousin has to carry the water for me because I just can't. I'm already tired and I'm not the one carrying it. Are you tired? No. <laughs> and then way back there, there are people taking a bath. Guys usually come and bathe in the river sometimes. Yeah. They're not scared. No. Do you also bathe in the river sometimes? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm, some garlic, some garlic, some omena. Mm. Guys, so now you want to fry the omena. What you've done is um. Uh, You've placed it inside hot water because that's what you're supposed to do first. We have our garlic and our onions. So mm. now we want to put it on the pan. Mm. Okay, so does it mean that when you place the omena in hot water, it just, um, because they're dry, so it brings back the natural form of the omena just to give it like more volume? Oh, that makes sense because when you look at them now, they they look like they've just been fished. Okay, <laughs> it makes sense. Mm. Mm. Guys, as you can see, our omena is ready. See how brown it has turned. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm already salivating. Now it's time to cook some ugali. So what you've done is we've already put some flour just to, um, what is it called? To fasten the process of the water boiling. Okay. Guys, so now know. we want to cook. I didn't know that. I've never done that. Did, did you know that to fasten the... Um, the, the boiling of the water, you just put some flour inside. I had no idea. The ugali, the vegetables and the omena is ready. As you can see, um, this is what you're going to be using to cook. This is ugali flour. This is made from maize. And here in our country, you don't just buy this. You know, we go to the farm. Right. Um, we get our maize, we dry our maize, we go to the posh meal. Right. Posh <laughs> and then we grind it. And right. this, that's how we get this. So you see, mm. life here is so healthy. Right. So guys, it's time the water is boiling, so it's time to put unga. Mm. <laughs> mm. Some nice ugali. That must be a uh, Trudy's cousin, you know, making the ugali, right? <laughs> oh, wow. Apparently, the Luos are the best ugali makers. Apparently, they, their ugali is like the best there is. So let me know in the comment section below if you agree, okay? I don't know if you can see it. Um, you see the brown lining around the sufuria, around the pan? The crust is so good. That's my best part of the ugali. Like each time I would make ugali and then I had the crust 
Mmm, it's so good. And with tea, it's very good. Guys, so now I've come out to the farm. What I love most about a country is that you actually get your food from the farm. Mm -hmm. And this is fresh food. So you know the water that has been used. You know, these days they put, they put so many things in food. You know, things that are not healthy. But now we want to make food. We have vegetables in the backyard. So all you have to do is pluck and cook. And that feels so good. Like you'll eat your food with your whole heart. Because right. you know right. it's healthy. So... So this is how we wash our hands before we massacre the food. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And that is something else. Uh, I, and I guess it's all over Africa because we eat a lot with our hands. So before every meal, everybody washes their hands. Somebody comes with hot water, with some soap, and you wash your hands systematically at each meal. And because in the West, people use forks, and so people never wash their hands when they're eating. So people have actually started just washing their hands all the time now with the corona. Otherwise, before, ugh, it was not it was not so clean. Mm. Mm. Many tastes so good. You guys don't even understand. Mm. Mm. Oh my goodness. I want some. <laughs> I want some. Let me ask you, what is the secret? Because you're so old. Look at you, you're walking. Is it the food you're eating? Is it the water you drink? <laughs> or do you have a herb that you usually take? Yeah. <laughs> just to be happy. So the secret is just oh. to be happy. Make yourself happy. Oh. And know where you are going. Uh -huh. Don't say I'm dying tomorrow. Uh -huh. Be happy. Yeah, be happy, guys. Be happy, be happy, be happy. And I'm telling you, I agree with um, I agree with Trudy's grandpa. So, well, he's a grandpa as well. He's he, he's uh, her grandpa's brother. But yeah, it's the same thing. So, be happy, happy people. It's very important. Try your best to be happy. Try your best to you know just to um see the good in everything despite the situation that you're in and be kind to everybody you never know the struggles that they're going through you know um in life so thank you so much for watching guys i hope you enjoyed if you did make sure you subscribe okay and make sure once again you tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend and so until next time thank you guys and bye